Students, today we can see about the next group of plants which comes under the plant kingdom that is the pteridophytes. The pteridophytes include the horsetails and the ferns. Okay, the ferns and the horsetails are the group of plants which comes under the pteridophytes. These pteridophytes are used for medicinal purposes. Various medicinal products can be produced from this plant. So, we can say they are used for medicinal purposes. And they are also used as soil binders. That means the root of these plants can hold the soil particles and prevent them from getting loosened. If it is loosened, it can be easily carried away by the water and the wind, isn't it? So, these can hold the soil particles so that they can prevent the soil erosion okay that's why we say they act as soil binders then these plants can also be grown as ornamental plants their leaves are very beautiful so they can be grown as ornamental plants ornamental plants means it can be used for beautification purpose or decoration purpose okay that plants we say it as ornamental plants so this is the ferns which can be used as a ornamental plants okay then these are the first terrestrial plants which possesses the vascular tissue what is that vascular tissue? It is the conducting tissue xylem and phloem. Xylem is used to conduct water and minerals and phloem can conduct uh, the food, isn't it? So, the first terrestrial plant to possess vascular tissue xylem and phloem is the pteridophytes. And when we see about the habitat, these pteridophytes can be found in cool, damp, shady places, just like that of the bryophytes, okay? In cool and damp places, where damp places means where water conducts is there and in shady places only they will be growing and they can also grow well in sandy soils where more amount of sand particles than the clay particle is present okay now when we see about the plant body the main plant body in uh, pteridophyte is the sporophyte so sporophytic generation forms the main plant body but in bryophyte the gametophytic generation is the main plant body isn't it that what we have seen in the previous uh, uh, class now this uh, sporophyte is the dominant plant body in the pteridophytes okay it forms the dominant phase or the main plant body in the uh, pteridophytes and it is having well differentiated uh, true root stem and the leaves that means the sporophyte is having the true root stem and the leaves okay and the vascular tissues are also well differentiated that is the xylem and phloem are also well differentiated or well developed okay when we see about the leaves the leaves may be small or it may be large if it is small we can say them as microfills micro means small fill means leaf okay so the plants some of the plants, some of the pteridophytes are having small leaves. For example, Selaginella is having small leaf and that leaves is called microfill. So, here you can see the small leaf. So, this is the microfill. But in the case of ferns, the leaf is large in size. So, here you can see the leaf is large and this is called macrofill. Macro means large, fill means leaf. Okay. So, the leaves can be microfills or uh, macrofills. Now, when we see about the spore sporophyte phytic generation in the sporophyte they these plants bear uh, leaf like appendages they are having this is the leaf like appendage okay they are having leaf like appendages which are called as sporophylls so what is the name of that leaf like appendage so this leaf like appendage this is called as what a sporophyll fill means leaf spore means you know spore isn't it so as they bear the spores these leaf like appendages appendages means outgrowth these leaf like outgrowths are called as sporophylls and in this sporophyll you can see the sporangia can you see here in this picture you can see small round structures are present they are called as what a sporangia okay and in this sporangia only the spores will be formed here you can see the spores are released from this sporangium uh, minute dot dust like structures are there okay so this is the uh, spores which are released from this sporangia okay in some of the plants like salaginella and equisetum the 
leaves that is the sporophylls the sporangia bearing the leaves or the spore bearing leaves that is the sporophylls are compactly arranged they all will join together and they are compactly arranged and they form structures called as strobili or we can say it as the cones okay cone like structures will be formed so in this if you see the leaf like structures will be arranged like this close to each other that means they are uh, compactly arranged like this okay and this structure is called what uh, the strobili or the cone okay and in this cone or in this strobili what will be developing the sporangia develops and inside the sporangia the spores will be developing okay so in equisetum as well as in selaginella strobili or cones will be developing which bear the sporangia and spores will be formed in them in other plants we can say they will be bearing the leaf like appendages in which sporangia will be formed and inside that sporangia the spore will be formed now how the spore is formed inside the sporangia certain cells are there called as spore mother cells this spore mother cell will develop into the spore see the sporophytic generation is deployed in nature isn't it you know that gametophytic generation is applied and the sporophytic generation is deployed in nature that means all the cells of the sporophytic generation are deployed deployed means they are having two set of chromosomes in the previous class itself we have seen they uh, deployed means they are having two set of chromosome isn't it so here the sporophyll or the sporangia or all the cells which form the sporophytic generation they all are deployed in nature okay now some of the cells which are present in that sporangia are differentiated as spore mother cell why they are called as spore mother cell because they develop into the spore they give rise to the spore that's why they are called as spore mother cell so this spore mother cell will undergo meiosis that is the reduction division as a result this deployed cells this deployed spore mother cell will be converted or it will be dividing into haploid spores so what will be formed haploid spores will be formed as a result of meiosis that occur in this spore mother cell okay now the spores are formed and it will be released out like this it will be released out so they may fall on to a certain substratum isn't it a suitable substratum when it fall on to a suitable substratum where moisture is there or water content is there it will germinate isn't it it will develop into a gametophytic generation which generation will be formed it will develop into a gametophytic generation and that gametophytic generation is named as prothallus so what is the structure named as a prothallus so what is prothallus it is the gametophytic generation of pteridophytes okay which develops from the spore or which germinates from the spore when we when we, we see this uh, prothallus it is inconspicuous in nature inconspicuous means what it is not clearly visible and it is small multicellular free living photosynthetic thalloid in nature so the gametophyte is thalloid only here it is not well developed into a stem root leaf okay it is thalloid thalloid you know it is not differentiated and undifferentiated plant body will be formed it is very minute don't think huge body like the bryophytes is formed no here it is very small in nature even though it is multicellular it is very small in nature okay and it is free living because it is developing from me from the spore it develops in the soil or any substratum okay so it is free living and it is photosynthetic it is having the pigment synthem so they pre, uh, perform photosynthesis and prepare the food okay so it no need to depend on the sporophytic generation okay so a free living gametophyte develops it is called the prothallus it is very minute in nature as it is small and uh, it can grow only in cool damp and shady places it is not found uh, in all the areas in all geographical areas this stratophytes cannot be found it is limited to certain geographical areas because this gametophytic gen generation cannot grow everywhere it needs a cool damp and uh, shady 
shady area okay water content rich area is required otherwise what will happen due to the sun's radiation it will dry off and it will die off isn't it so to prevent that they will not be growing in all the places they will be found only in the damp shady places that's why it is restricted to certain geographical regions okay now this gametophyte will be growing into a small structure that is called the prothallus which bear the male and the female sex organ so this is the gametophyte you can see somewhat a heart shaped prothallus this is so it will be bearing the male and the female sex organ male sex organ is called the anthridia and female sex organ the archegonia so here you can see the anthridia and here you can see the archegonia okay so the anthridia produces the male gamete called the anthrocyte and the archegonia produces the female gamete that is the egg now the male gamete will be released out and here at least the moisture or one drop of water should be there for the fertilization to take place okay so they also need water so the anthrocyte will be moving through the water and then it reaches the mouth of the archegonia then it enters inside and fuses with the egg and a diploid zygote will be formed okay what will be formed a diploid zygote will be formed why it is diploid because it is formed by the fusion of male and female gamete okay so one plus one that is one set of gamete one set of chromosome from the male gamete and another set of chromosome from female gamete will fuse together to form two set of chromosomes that is the diploid condition and that diploid stage is what a zygote okay now the zygote will be developing into a multicellular sporophytic generation which is the dominant phase in the pteridophyte okay so it develops into the sporophyte okay i hope you might have understood this this is the life cycle of uh, pteridophyte now this uh, uh, sporophytic generation will be developing the true stem root and leaf and there it develops the sporophylls uh, which bear the sporangia in that the spores will be formed again the spore will fall down it develops into this prothallus uh, then the spore prothallus will bear the male and female sex organs they produce the male and the female gametes they fuse together to form the zygote zygote develops into the into the sporophyte so here if you are assuming the zygote is there anywhere in this okay it develops into the sporophyte like this it develops and the true stem root leaf will be formed okay now in some of the plants if you see uh, they produce two types of spores in most in majority of the plants they produce only one type of spore that is they are homosporous homo means what is same so the spores produced are of similar kind okay so same type of uh, uh, spores will be formed that we say it as homosporous but in some uh, group that is some genus or some genera genus means you know in the first chapter you have studied isn't it yes so in some genus like salaginella and salvinia two types of spores will be formed okay so they it is said to be a heterosporous hetero means what a different different kinds of spores are formed one is large and one is small the large spore we can say it as macrospore megaspore we can say macrospore also it is called the megaspore mega means large okay and the smaller spore is called the microspore okay so two types of spores are produced uh, in some of the plants like salaginella and salvinia the large spore is called what megaspore or we can say it as macrospore okay and the small one is called as the microspore okay now this macro or the megaspore can develop into the female gametophyte and the microspore develop into the male gametophyte okay uh, the female gametophyte normally will be retained in the parent sporophyte itself for some period of time okay then they will uh, uh, fall down they develop uh, uh, they produce the male and the female sex organs the female gametophyte will develop the female sex organ male gametophyte will develop the male sex organ then the gametes will be produced then from the male gametophyte the male gamete has to be transferred to the female gamete for that uh, what is required uh, 
the water is required then it will reach the female gamete where it will fuse and it will uh, form the zygote okay and this zygote will develop into a young embryo in some of these cases only like uh, the salaginella and salvinia okay it develops into the embryo which is similar to that of the seed seed habit which is seen in higher plants okay so this uh, zygote will be developing into a young embryo within the female gametophyte where is the female gametophyte develop from where it develops the megaspore develop into the female gametophyte it remains in the sporophyte for certain period of time then it falls down okay it develops into the female gametophyte there the sex organ will be formed female sex organ will be formed male sex organ will be formed in the male gametophyte then from that the male gamete will be uh, formed in male uh, sex organ that is the anthridia it will be uh, the anthridia from the anthridia the male gamete that is the anthrozoid will be passing through the water it reaches the female gamete which is present in the archegonia in okay in the female gametophyte their fusion occurs and the zygote will be developing so the zygote develops within the female gametophyte only okay within the female gametophyte the zygote develops and this zygote will develop into an embryo which is similar to that of an embryo which develops inside the seed of the higher plants like gymnosperms or the angiosperms okay so we can say it is a precursor of seed habit which is seen in higher plants precursor means a primitive form earlier form okay of the seed habit which is seen in the higher plants okay so it is considered to be as an important step in evolution that is from pteridophytes the gymnosperms developed or from gymnosperms the angiosperms developed like that a connection can be formed why we say a connection is there or an evolutionary relation is there because the embryo will be developing in the zygote from the zygote within the female gametophyte which is similar Similar to that of the seed habit, that is the embryo developing the embryo which develops inside the seed. Which it is similar to that. That's why we can say it is an important step in evolution. Okay. Now this uh, pteridophyte is further classified into four classes. What are the four classes? One is Silopsida. For example, example for Silopsida class is Silota. Another class is Lycopsida, example is Selachinella. Another class is Phenopsida, example is Equusetum. And another class is Teropsida, example Dryopterus or Teres or Adianthum. These are all examples of this. Okay, so that is about the pteridophytes.